Hello everybody, my name is Hitender Singh and this is a video about the dynamic simulation of the Newton's cradle in the dynamic simulation environment of Autodesk Inventor. So here we can see the model. There is a base with these frames fixed on the base and these frames have the drill holes drilled in it and we have seven balls. These balls are fixed rigidly to these wires and we are going to constrain and uh, we are going to position this wire and the ball or this frame so that this uh, this uh, ball and the wire can swing around the axis of the holes drilled on this frame so i'm going to apply a constraint here to this wire first i'm going to change the view to wire frame so that we can apply the constraints more precisely without any trouble. So uh, I'm going to apply a constraint between the central point of this face of this wire and the central point of this face here in the hole drill on this frame. So here it is. Okay, now I'm going to change the view. And now we can see that one end of this wire is fixed there on that frame, whereas this is still uh, free to move. So I will apply another constraint to this end. This time I'm going to apply a constraint between the axis of this piece of wire and the axis of the hole here drilled on the frame so here it is okay now we can see here that this ball is free to swing around around the axis of the hole there now i am going to apply temporarily uh, a constraint to put this, uh, this assembly of this ball and wire in parallel to the other wires and balls which are already hanging here. So what I'm doing is I will apply uh, an angular uh, constraint between the XY plane of this wire. We can see it here and this face here okay so now we can see here that they are all parallel all these wires are parallel to each other now i'm going to suppress this angular constraint otherwise uh, this ball will not be able to go freely and they will not be able to swing like a pendulum so now we are ready to to enter the dynamic simulation environment here. Now what we can see here is that the, the, the parts of this model which are fixed are the base and these frames and uh, there are seven model groups. It is, there, is, uh, there is a welded group of a ball and a wire and there are seven of these model groups and there are seven standard joints which have been generated automatically when we entered the dynamic simulation environment as I had selected this option of converting automatically the constraints into standard joints. So now we can see all these uh, coordinates of these joints and now I'm going to change the change the modify this coordinate of the seventh joint, the standard joint so that all these coordinates will be facing in the will be facing the same directions so i'm going to flip the x axis here okay now we can see here that uh, all of them uh, all these coordinates are are uh, looking in the same direction here now i'm going to apply a 2d contact between the sixth and the seventh ball as uh, between the other six balls, I have already applied these 2D contacts. I'm going to uh, make the 2D sketch visible here as 
this uh, we can see here this uh, uh, 2D sketch on the surface of these bones. So now I will add another joint. I will select the 2D contact. First, I will select this curve on the surface of the sixth bone, and then I will select the this curve on the surface of the seventh bone and click OK. So we can see here that I have already defined the direction of the gravity also as here the potential energy of the bone which will be moving upward will be converted into the kinetic energy and then, then it will be colliding with the, these bones to start the uh, dynamic simulation here of the Newton's cradle. So I'm going to apply one more change here. I'm going to change the properties of all these 2D contacts. Okay, it's already, I actually, I had changed it earlier. So the restitution here is one and the friction between the bones will be zero so that there will be a frictionless collision between the between these bones and uh, they can swing up to infinity they will keep on swimming swinging without uh, without stopping so now we are ready i'm going to change the position of this first ball to a new position here and I will make it 45 degree. Okay, so now this ball is positioned at this place. And now I will make the 2D sketches also invisible and uh, it will activate the shadow and the reflection also to see, uh, to give it a more realistic look now. I'm going so now I'm going to hit the play button to see how this model will behave. So here we can see that uh, when the first ball is colliding with the other six balls here, that uh, all the six balls are moving together and uh, they are coming back to collide with the first ball. And uh, this is not the way uh, a Newton's cradle behave in the real world. So we are going to uh, look into the the results in the output grapher also to to study the pattern this uh, model is following during the dynamic simulation. So I will click on the output grapher, and here we will go to the the first collision which took place. And uh, here we can see that at this time step, in this particular time step here, we can see we can see that uh, the joint force generated between the first and the second ball at the, the here is uh, at that same instant at that same time step. There is a force generated in the other joints also, other uh, 2D contacts also, which uh, doesn't happen in a Newton's cradle. In the in a Newton's cradle, it is a kind of a chain uh, uh, phenomena that the first ball when collides with the second ball, it uh, uh, transfers the momentum comes to a rest and the second ball then transfers its momentum. But uh, it uh, it happens in a fraction of a second that uh, when only when the first ball comes to a stop it uh, the second ball starts moving and uh, this is so fast that which cannot be uh, uh, seen by naked eyes but here what is happening is that at the same time step the same force the, uh, the force is generated between these uh, contact joints also up to the last ball so uh, we are going to make some changes here to see how uh, we can obtain the, the actual behavior. We can obtain the dynamic sim simulation of the actual behavior of a Newton's cradle by modifying uh, some parameter here. So I'm going to the uh, beginning of this uh, simulation. I will, I will switch to the construction mode. And then I will open 
this ball, this steel ball in a new tab here. We can see this new ball, uh, this steel ball here. And uh, we can see here now is that the, the ball's diameter here is 75 millimeters. So what we normally do is that when we uh, make a model of the Newton's cradle, the diameter of the ball, we take it exactly equal to the distance between the axis of these holes here so that these balls we uh, fit perfectly uh, at their positions and neither they are uh, placed uh, at a distance and nor they are uh, uh, pushing each other when we when we fit the balls here so what i'm going to do here is that uh, i'm going to change the I'm going to change the diameter of this ball from 75 millimeters to 74.999 millimeters. So it's, I'm changing it by 1000th of a millimeter. So this, uh, this change in the diameter of this ball is not going to make a, a very significant change in the physical properties of this uh, steel ball. But we will be able to change the, the behavior of the Newton's cradle uh, in the dynamic simulation environment by this. So now we go back there and now I'm going to hit the play button to see how it is going to behave now. So I will hit the play button and see here. Now we can see that only one ball is moving out and uh, not the uh, all of the six balls and when it is going back it is hitting and the momentum is conserved and the first ball is again moving outward to the same position from where we had released it as the there is no loss of energy because uh, we had made this uh, assembly frictionless so now we can see in the output graph also the the changes in the pattern here in the behavior now we can see that uh, we will again go to the first collision here and we can see at the this joint at the 2d contact joint here the force between these first two balls is uh, 19,259 newtons whereas there is no joint force between the these other 2d contacts here so uh, now if i go upward here we can see at the second time step here there is a joint force between these two, uh, second and the third ball only and on in the others it is zero so it is here we can uh, understand that it is going it is taking place uh, in a in a series in, in a in a kind of a chain manner so uh, from the first in the six time steps we can see here this momentum is conserved that uh, energy is transferred from the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth to the sixth joint here and this way it is behaving exactly like a Newton's cradle which behaves in the real world. Now what we will do we will uh, play a bit more with this uh, Newton's cradle here. I'm going to change the position of the second ball also so that we will lift two balls and they will come down uh, together so that we will see now how it is, it is, it is going to behave. So I hit the play button again. Now we can see here that uh, only two balls are going out instead of uh, the, the the problem we were facing earlier so it is being perfectly here now we make another change we will change the positions of these balls and we will see uh, instead of taking three balls together i'm going to take four balls here so i will go to the construction mode again and uh, i will take the third ball and change its property 
and uh, here I'm going to put it to 45 degrees and again the fourth joint also I'm going to change the properties and we'll change it to 45 degrees instead of zero okay now let's see how it goes now so here we can see that uh, now the four balls are moving outward in both the directions back and forth and this is working behaving perfectly from a, uh, like a Newton's cradle in the real world so as we have seen that how by changing a very small parameter by a thousandth of a millimeter we were able to rectify the problem we have been able to make this model work uh, in the dynamic simulation environment exactly like in the real world so i hope that you have enjoyed watching this video thanks for watching bye bye